Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. This is Mallory Donahue. And ZD Donahue. And we haven't done this in a while, so it took us a little while to get set up. (laughs) (laughs) And then I just found some notes, too, that I have no idea what they mean. Um, Read us the sentence you just read me from your note. Okay. Okay, just say it. One of the things on my notes, it, it says, sewing as a religion. We'll just leave it at that, okay? Just leave it right there. (laughs) <laughs> We're going to do a new little segment I, I here, don't know what it means, so. here at the beginning of this podcast. And this is some listener mail. And this is from Megan. The listener mail says, Hi, Mallory. I have recently found your podcast, and I really enjoy listening to you and ZD. I am getting ready to start working on a jean shorts pattern for my girls. Since you've been sewing jeans for yourself, I was wondering if you could point me to a good place to purchase the hardware like snaps, buttons, and rivets. I've heard that the Dritz rivets you can find at the big box stores are kind of crappy, so I was wondering if you knew of any super special place to find them. Thank you for your time, and please don't ever stop podcasting. You and your mom make my evening walks enjoyable. Oh, wow. I didn't make that up. I was going to say, (laughs) do we know her? (laughs) Are we related to her? We're friends with her now. Uh, uh, She's my best friend now. Megan's friend, okay. Um, And I emailed Megan back, and I was like, I hope you still like me after this email, but... I didn't put rivets on my jeans. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how old her girls are. Yeah. And if they want rivets. Right. Um, if they if they're small children, I I just wouldn't even put rivets on. Yeah, and on. I said, I said, I don't mean to be kinda, you know, discouraging or anything, right. but I'm like, you know, I just don't know if they're that, you know, big of a deal. And I think the rivets, um, she she mentioned later in an email, like, right. I don't want to buy a rivet press. And I think that's the rub. I think it's probably easier to put in rivets if you have the right tool versus the well, right rivet and it's the know. right tool and she's right the ones that are sold like at the box stores or whatever generally the prongs just aren't as long as what you get right. you know in an industrial setting so they aren't strong and they do come off and and they can be a problem and i'd recommend going to heather Lou's site uh closet case files.com and reading you know just search for jeans hardware she's got excellent articles about it but then I also made a recommendation to Megan that uh she should try snap source snaps snap source snaps the only snap to use as far as I'm concerned we, I have never found anything better and we'll do a podcast on it because right. we just freaking and again love them. one reason those work right is the long prongs long yep, and they're called they're called I, long prong snaps actually I don't know if you know this if you've looked in our snap source set but after using like the one tool yeah. for twenty years, it just cracked on me. Oh no way! Yeah, one of the setters. It broke. Yeah, it's made oh. out of plastic. It just like I thought. I guess we've had that forever yeah. though. Well, I thought yeah. I, twenty years. Yeah, I, I thought I here. guess I've hit this for the one hundred thousandth yeah. time. Oh, and probably. it's really expensive, right? Right, right, right. right. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah. No, but I, I people, we need to actually bring one home from I the store. I tell people, here. Yeah. I'm like, you can get an entire set of the setters here for right. like. It's, I mean, I think it's a total, it's less than $15. You can have everything. I mean, you need a hammer, you need the snaps, you know. But it just, it just broke. I I, I was like, oh, I've used. The plastic probably Now, what I want to tell you is I continued to use it even as, (laughs) even broken because, so, because it wasn't like at the exact setting part, you know, it was off to the side. So. It works when it's broken. Well, hey, there right. you go. No, they last, but they do. They hey, last look, a really long time. I broke something and I didn't tell you instead of the other way around. Oh, How about hey, that? hey, yeah. no. you, you just told me right. it doesn't count. Oh, I didn't okay. have to go find it. Megan, we love you. Yes, but Megan, good luck on it. No, and she was the like, thing oh, of, the thing about hardware, especially on on the mm-hmm. rear ends, is it tears up your furniture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Megan was like, no, you didn't disappoint me. This was a oh, you know, good. good idea. And um, she also was like, oh, yeah, snaps on little kids' clothes are awesome. you know. Right. And I'm <laughs> going to put snaps on my ginger jeans. And little ginger jeans update. Uh, we're, we're still making our jeans in class. And everybody's starting construction. Everybody's basted. Everybody's gotten fitted. And um, I taught an hour-long construction demonstration class last week and it was really cool because it was like from 5 30 to 7 and I showed front pocket in like insertion construction right. and the fly 
and I did like the back seams and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is only this only took an hour and a half, and right. I talked a lot right. during the whole thing. And then and also probably got interrupted. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And people had questions and stuff. And um, I messed something up one time, you know. And then think a shout out to <gasps> maybe you should make them and sell them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Melinda. She was my pattern instruction reader um, yes. for for that class, and that was that was really helpful. But anyway, I'm like, oh, I can't wait. Isn't isn't she the one that just made her husband a pair of cargo pants? Yes, I saw she posted. Did. She they did. Looked really, she did. He was in them, so we know they fit. Oh, I haven't seen that. Picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he awesome. was in them. His name's Charlie. Uh, um, <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, you're looking hot. Charlie, looking good. Okay, so anyway, um, I will be though on the, on those pl- pairs that I was demoing on. I'm going to be putting snaps on them, so I can't wait to tell you, Megan, exactly how that pans out for me as a big person uh, with snaps on my jeans. Uh, that intro took just a little under six minutes. Okay. So that's viewer mail intro, right? And that's not too bad. I think it was all sewing So we're going to do viewer mail at the beginning of the podcast and not the end like most people do. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do it our way. So says, yeah. so says ZD. Um, but let's get to the matter at hand today, which is uh, bobbins. Oh, no. Wait a minute. I I have to just say something. I've been listening to our podcast, of course. And I am really going to try something different this time. Sometimes when I laugh, I sound like the Wicked Witch of the West. (laughs) So I have, instead of going, (laughs) or whatever I do, I don't don't know how I make that noise. I'm going to try and, like, laugh lower or something. I don't know. It's. It, I really sound like I'm taking off on my broom. So <laughs> well, there's a reason for that. No. Okay, okay. Let's talk about bobbins. You were bobbins. out to trot. You're out to. You're like, Mel. We yeah. haven't talked about bobbins. Yeah, bobbins. Okay, so you take it away, Z. Why do we need bobbins? Because we do a lock stitch on our sewing machines. We need a top thread and we need a bo- a bottom thread. And your bobbin goes your on bobbin. the bottom. And <laughs> and it's B O B I N. No, bo- it's not B O B. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, I'm witch laughing. Okay. <laughs> Try one. B O B B I N. Yes. It's not a bobber. It's not a bobette. It is a bobbin. That's oh, right. Okay. Um, and I, you guys, you don't believe how many people call it a bobber. But I th- love it. That's the thing you use, like when you fish. When you fish. Yeah. Anyway. And your bobbin has a definite, like, there are, there are, I think it's a real special part of the machine. It is. Yeah. And, Every machine, there are more, there's more than one size bobbin. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go back, like, in history, especially of the Singer machine, they had some uh, bobbins at one time that you, uh, I know there's people still out there with these machines, where you could actually fill the bobbin while it was in the machine. Right. And they've got a really bizarre bobbin. Is that the one that's smaller on top? Yeah. And bigger mm-hmm. on bottom? Mm-hmm. Like, it has a definite... Right, and I Top can and tell bottom. you why that was a bad idea. If, if yeah, they don't do that know. anymore, do they? No, <laughs> well, that's a bad idea. You didn't get a good fill on right. your bobbin. Right, and why anybody thought? I mean, it, it was their marketing, and they, I can I can remember I was alive when they marketed it. Um, when they marketed it as you know, oh, you don't have to stop and and change your bobbin. Well, you still had it. It was still hard, and it's not a good idea. And not work. Yeah, it's not, just not, not a good work. idea. Yeah. Um, you don't need that mechanism to fill your bobbin. You need to wind your bobbin outside of your machine and drop in a nice clean bobbin when you need it. If you have a problem with with filling bobbins, is that's a problem you have? Fill a whole bunch ahead of time. Teach a kid how to do it. <laughs> um, there are also pre-wound bobbins on the market now that are quite good. Pre-wound bobbins used to really not be a good idea for home machines. Right. They had a lot of um, glue. Is, is basically what it is, uh, or you can call it, you know, binding, whatever. But uh, they would gum up your machine, and they're not like that anymore. They're they're, they're really nice. made very well. Uh, the 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 pre wounds that we sell in our store, the Filtech ones, and those are the, they are like recommended by Baby Lock. Right. So I really like that that like the machine company has tested them. Just because I know they do really good work like that, right. and you can get pre wound bobbins for embroidery. Or they do yeah, sell Yeah, different them. weights. They sell them for quilting, too. Quilting, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've not come across, like, a polyester construction weight pre-wound bobbin. Right. Forgive me if I'm being, being ignorant, but... Well, honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't know think, what... Okay, I don't unless, know why you unless you're either, going but... to manufacture those jeans and sell right, a whole bunch right, of them. Yeah. I mean, usually you fill a bobbin, it'll get you through a project. Right. 
Um, but with quilting prewounds, right. I think they're geared toward, um, you know, like maybe somebody who's just going to be doing like a who's a gonna ton. who's gonna cut those ninety five triangles it, to put in that's quilt. right, that's yeah. right. Or they're doing they're right. doing the work on a long arm and it's right. a neutral color or whatever. Right. Um. But so right. So every machine does have does have though its bobbin size or right. specific bobbin, and what we see in the industry mostly, and again here we're talking about things. Um, like I say, if there's a rule, there's always an exception. But we have an L bobbin, and we have what's the other one, Mallory? Class fifteen. Cl- <laughs> class fifteen bobbin. <laughs> I, 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 and and then the bobbins you see for the quilting machines are are much larger. And they're class M. And they're class bobbin. M for much thread. No, I, guess. I, uh, I just I know what it st- it stands for. Shoot, I'll put that in the show notes. Okay. Somebody said it at Baby Lock when I was just there. Right. Yeah. You're there. Um, but you can know the size bobbin you need. But honestly, the best thing to do is buy the bobbin that was specific, is specifically manufactured for your machine. Yeah, you can go to a big box store and you can find something that says Class L or okay. Class 15 right. or whatever you need. And it's it's kind of crazy, but they really will not give you as good of a stitch. Like we they see won't. it with with the majority of the machines we sell, the baby locks. They take the plastic class fifteen bobbins and the baby lock genuine bobbins have this like blue cast to right. them, and I can tell they're sturdier. I know they are because I can snap the other ones with my fingers. That's right, yeah. literally. You know. Well, and the problem with the plastic bobbin that I run into is that they, if they are made flimsy, you, you can overfill them. Right, right. And then it's no longer the same shape uh-huh. that it was because it's flimsy and it's filled with thread and it's allowed it to flare out. And then people wonder why they're having trouble. Hey, so, you know, spend about, an extra quarter or dollar right, or whatever you have yeah. to on your bobbin. Talk about um, materials of the bobbins, what they're made of. Well, there's metal, mm-hmm. and then there's plastic. I, right. I, some sort of composite plastic. I, when you say materials, I don't know exactly what they're made oh, out sure. of. Oh, sure, but right. I, I think that what we see a lot of times, if you do have a machine with a drop-in bobbin, right. it's um, a plastic bobbin case within your machine, you shouldn't be using a metal bobbin. Right. Metal to metal, uh, plastic to plastic is, right. is, the, is what... Now, generally that plastic is also a composite, that black case that's in your drop-in bobbin. But those work best with plastic and um, your metal, and that's usually on a rotary hook, which goes into your machine sideways, and you take the whole bobbin case out to drop your bobbin in. That's that's a rotary hook, generally. And that's a metal bobbin. But it can be class... It can be either class. E- either size, yeah. Right. Either the class right. 15, There's class 15 and class L, and, metal, and And that has a lot to do with size. Yeah. Right. Well, and another thing, you know, we always talked about, oh, no no metal bobbins in the plastic bobbin cases because it can kind of, like, wear right. on them, you know. Right. But another thing our tech recently said to me is he says the metal bobbin actually puts more drag on the thread just because of the weight of it. That's and right. I kind of never thought of that, you it's know. It's heavier. Mm-hmm. It's heavier. And I was like, oh, of course, right. you know, that's true. Right. You know, but that, that's another part of the calibration of the machine. Um, and then, uh, Mom, my machine has a drop-in bobbin, so it doesn't have a bobbin case. Yes, it does. What? Everyone has a bobbin case. <laughs> yes. So, so even if you have a drop-in bobbin and you don't remove your bobbin case to change your bobbin, you do have a bobbin case, FYI. Right. 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 It's, there it's is a bobbin there. case there. And the reason there's a bobbin case is for certain kinds of work or play or whatever you would like to call it, techniques, you may have a bobbin case that you use that has a different tension on it. Right. Okay. So you may have two bobbin cases for that drop-in bobbin. Or you may purchase the second one later, depending, you know, you take a class and you learn a new technique or something like that. Now, here's a rule, and I like this rule, and I like to keep it. Don't change the tension on your bobbin case. If you think you know what you're doing, you probably don't. <laughs> if you're sure you know what you're doing, that's a different yeah, there, situation. There are some situations... If if it talks about it in your, I think I think it's pretty clear. If it talks about it in your owner's manual, right up front, like right in the threading, because where I can think of where you would 
change your bob and tension are on some of those bigger quilting machines where you go from real lightweight to heavyweight right. and it's got the removable bobbin case. Right. You know? They talk about it they talk about it right well, with well hold on. Yeah. They talk about it right with threading. They say right. thread your bobbin case and do this test to make sure the tension's That's correct. Right. But if your owner's manual simply says, you know, drop your bobbin in or insert your bobbin into your bobbin case and thread that's probably not something you need to worry about right away. Just like mom right. said, it's probably not the problem. And and the and the long arm quilting machines are a different animal yep. than your home sewing machine or your home um, embroidery machine. Absolutely. And they're set. Now there are instances where the bobbin can get lint in it. Um, you may need to look. You may de- need to clean it. You may need to run something like. Um, uh, on the sp- on the spring on on the uh, hook bobbin case, you know, the spring is that a little piece of metal that lays on top like of the case. You mean the hook bobbin case? You mean right. like a rotary bobbin? Rotary or, bobbin, or a, right? You know, right, a, rotary hook, a front loading mm-hmm. bobbin, and it's metal. Yep. And you know, lint can get under there. I say take a piece of non-wax dental floss and run it under there if this you can. This has happened twice in the past six months at the shop. It's right. like people with the baby lock multi-needles call mm-hmm. me. Say, oh my gosh, my bobbin thread is showing on top. It's terrible. Right. I'm like, take take one of your business cards and run under it. that spring. And they, yep. they are on the phone with me. And they go, oh, because <laughs> yeah. like a bunch of crap came right. out of there. Right. And, right. And, right. It's, and it's like, it's like I think a combination of like thread. You know, there's, there's glue right. on all thread. And then there's lint from right. their project. Well, especially since we started doing um, embroidery at home, if I can't, I you know, there's just volumes of stitches of yeah. thread, right, mm-hmm. that's running through that bobbin case that didn't in days gone by. Sure, sure. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I wonder how many stitches it takes to make a dress. Probably n- nothing compared to... To a monogram. One yeah. monogram, right. <laughs> yeah, and how right. much that needle's punching up and down. So, what I'm saying is, and... There's so many people that said, oh, my tension was so screwed up. So I, I changed it on my bobbin right. case. It's not the place to change it. I guarantee you it, that it's the wrong thing to do. It's the last thing you want to do. People will come in and they will have more of a mess because they have, you know, tightened or loosened that screw on that yeah, bobbin and case. and let's just remind people. Oh, and they also lose that screw. Yeah. Because oh, it's yeah. so tiny. <laughs> oh, that's my screw. Let's, you know? let's just remind people real quick of the rule. If you see a mess of thread underneath your so project. You, if you have a nest underneath we on call the bottom. It, call it bird's nesting or people right. will say something like that. That's a top tension issue. issue. Right. And most of the time that means you didn't thread with your presser foot up. That's right. And I would highly encourage you, the first episode we did of this podcast, this is like 23 episodes ago or whatever, is thread with your presser foot up. Please go and listen to it. Because it's so entertaining and so important. So if you've got that mess underneath, it's a top tension issue. But then if you do see looping on the top, right, or you see bobbin thread on the top during embroidery or satin stitching, right, that's your bobbin tension issue. Okay, and what could cause that? <gasps> Threading on a rotary hook. Oh, if I pull my bobbin thread and uh-huh. I'm looking at my bobbin, I'm holding my bobbin case. Yep. So I have my metal rotary hook bobbin case in my hand yep. and I pull on the bobbin thread in which direction should my bobbin be spinning clockwise you got it <laughs> and and mom and mom yes. if I have my machine with my drop in bobbin with a plastic bobbin case and I drop my bobbin in and pull on my thread in which direction should it be turning well counter Clockwise. Yep, exactly. But I don't even have to know what counterclockwise means because there's a little arrow on my well, bobbin yeah, case. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, so, you know, there are right. there are generally, and uh, well, I don't want to say this for everything, right. I guess, but generally on the newer machines, there's a little diagram. I'm telling you what, though, it's not a bad idea to check yourself twice. <laughs> that's right. And the other thing that can cause the bobbin tension is you did not get it under the spring on your rotary hook bobbin mm-hmm. and on your drop in bobbin. Yep. Oftentimes, people just seem to miss that last little thing. It's it's hard. I think I really try to explain this to people. I think right. it's hard for people to see and understand. Right. But when when you do that, and 
um, some really talented person just filmed a few videos of Baby Lock about this. And, and you'll see her soon. Um, anyway. Is she strikingly beautiful she's also? gorgeous. Um, anyway, Is she modest? She's very modest. <laughs> When you when you think you've got your bobbin threaded and you pull on that right. thread, you should feel some resistance. Right, and you should yeah. We, anytime you get a machine, especially when you're you're getting instruction from the dealer, the dealer should be able to say say this is how it feels when you're in the right place. Yep. This is how it feels when you're in. The, learn you, you. I learn a lot of things by feel. Yeah, and does this feel right? Well, also, it'll it'll sound different sometimes. Too. Oh sure. Well, so you can hear. We don't want to get that far. Right. We want to get. We want to feel good, and, so we don't but, have to sound but it bad. It's impressive when there's like six people in a class, and I'll say stop, and I'll point to somebody, and I'll go, "Your bobbin is in wrong," and they're yeah. like, "Oh no!" It's, I go, Gar- "I guarantee you, right. I can hear it," and they they kind of freak out. Maybe I am a witch. I'm a sewing witch. It's all, and anyway. embrace it, mom. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that that we need do need to make sure that and say <clears throat> that the rules that we just talked about for the clockwise and counterclockwise. Mm-hmm. They hold true for every machine. Okay, what I mean is every drop-in bobbin needs to go that way where right. it turns counterclockwise, and every front-loading, side-loading bobbin needs to turn clockwise. Right. Just, I mean, I don't know of an exception. I don't either. But I had somebody come in one time and say, oh, no, my machine needs to, you know, my right. they had a front-loading bobbin. Mine needs to go counterclockwise. And I'm like, no, no, it doesn't. Now, now wait a minute. Some people don't know what clockwise well, and counterclockwise sure. is either. Oh, I you noticed know, that. You know what the other thing that I, I learned recently in my sewing life is – for the drop-in bobbins, if you lay your bobbin down and you bring the thread, um, if you lay your bobbin down correctly, like right. on its, you know, bottom or whatever, and you put the thread down, it should look like the letter P. Mm-hmm. Okay, but for a front-loading bobbin, oh, I see. Uh, well, oh, I see what you're saying. When, yeah. For a front-loading bobbin, when you lay the bobbin down, you have the the thread down. It should look like the number nine. So it's a nine it could, or a P. It could be a six too. Oh. E- no, that's a nine. It depends. It could be a oh, six, you, no, d- Mom, do not confuse the issue. The thread is straight down, and it's a nine or a P. But you're if right. It's straight yes, up, I see. It's doing I see what the you're same saying. Thing. Right. No, I see what you're saying. Or right. okay, so is so it'd be a P, or right. a or a, a lowercase D. Thanks, Mom, for confusing <laughs> my very simple analogy. Okay, but I. But that's good. A P or well, a nine is a P, good. I think a P or a nine is good because I heard somebody. Well, say, that way you've got the thread like. <clears throat> come, P and nine's good. P and nine is good. And I also, somebody was like, oh, yeah, the bobbin, we need to put it in so that the thread's coming over the waterfall. And I was like, that makes no damn sense to me. Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It is funny when people use I, those little I things. I mean, and yeah. if it works for you, like, right. if over the waterfall works for you, like, fabulous. You know, but I was like, that just, I don't think that that really, like, has a lot of, like, concrete grounding. Like, the every w- waterfall could go in either direction. That's how I feel. That's the problem. You know? um, yeah, especially <laughs> depending on which which, you know, continental divide you're on and all this kind of thing. Right, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I was sort of like, yeah. And then and it was a baby lock educator that said the nine or the P thing. I always. Just I do said, like that. I always just said the counterclockwise, clockwise thing. Sure. But I was like, oh, well, this could save a little time. Okay. Uh, right. You want to talk about winding bobbins? Well, I guess. Or, yes, I go- and or thread. You know, uh, sure. what, what threads go on your bobbin? Okay, talk about so that. So if I'm, if I'm constructing something, I should have exactly the same... If I'm making a seam using construction, like I should have a garment or I should like have that. exactly the same thread on top as on the bottom. And when I say this, I even mean the same color. And the reason I say the same color, and this is very, I mean, this sh- this will be in the thread lecture when we do the thread cast, but dyes weigh different amounts. And they, they, they weigh different, and they also, I think, like, Black thread and red thread get overworked. They get dyed, 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 dyed. Yes. I'd always notice this. I feel like you can feel it in black fabric and red I fabric think, too. You know, I always think black thread is the weakest thread. Yeah, too. and yeah, and you know who said that too? Mary Malari. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, we're not crazy. We're not right, just making this right. up. No, like, you I, know? I, I yeah, always she, feel like black thread's the weakest yeah, thread. She, right. she, she said that too. She was like, just be, you know, if you experience a little more breakage with a black thread, like don't be right. surprised. Right. You know, absolutely. It shouldn't, shouldn't obviously break every like five stitches, no. but she said, you know, it's just weaker because it's been over dyed. And I was like, that's what we've said. And so, so same, same weight for can construction. Can I tell you my exception to that? Sure. Rule? So. When you when you have to take out a seam, <laughs> which I've done in my lifetime, 
you well, especially if you're making something and you're going to alter it or you're putting in a um, a, a basting seam you know you're going to take out. You always want to pull your bobbin thread. If you pull your top thread, you will tighten it. If you pull your bobbin thread, it will come out. It, it, will, it will glide out. So if I'm making 44 costumes mm -hmm. in one weekend, mm -hmm. sometimes I would use dark pink on top and light pink on bottom. So you can top So I could them. quickly. Immediately. Quickly find the bobbin thread on something. No thinking. Just, right. Yeah. Right. And, you know, there's all these theories about costumes. Well, a lot. Like today, I worked on some costumes. Oh, my gosh. I put so much time in these and. You know, they're for two for toddlers, two. and they're yeah. going to wear them for yeah. two minutes. <laughs> but anyway, um, and I, I put my blood, sweat, and t tears into those suckers. But anyway, that, okay, so construction thread, same on top as on bottom. Right. Except for my exception rule. Sure. And then if you're doing top stitching. Mm -hmm. Like on my jeans with my heavier top stitching right. thread. You, you're, you're not going to change. You're going to have a normal construction weight in your bobbin. Yeah. And then you're a heavier thread, basically, on top. Mm -hmm. Now, this also happens with embroidery. But with embroidery, you have a lighter. You, you have a, a lighter thread already on top. Uh -huh. So you need a super light thread yeah, on the bottom. I think and threads are by weights. Yeah, so let's talk just a tad about thread weight. A little bit. The, the higher the number, the lighter the thread. Right. So 90 weight thread is very thin. You right. know, lingerie, bobbin weight thread is, you know, what they'll call it. So, right. So, if I had a bucket. Yeah. Right. Right. And I put 90 big balls in it, mm -hmm. it would weigh a pound. Right. But if I had um, these balls that were smaller and they were 60s. Right. Because the 90s were bigger. So, the 60 weight balls, I would have to put more Right. In the bucket right. to make a pound. I don't know if that helped anybody. I think that the better way to say this is like 90 feet of this thread weighs the same as 60 feet of another there thread. There you go. That's that how, works that's too. How it's, okay. like, that's not that exactly how it's too. done, but that's, right. that's the, right. that, that is right. the, um, right. that's how a gauge, that's how a gauge that's, works. That's how a gauge right? works. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, with a, with embroidery thread, je, you know. For and if, if you're in the medical field, you'll understand yes, gauge, gauge because, yes. you know, a number nine needle is much bigger than a 21 needle. Right, right. So uh, in embroidery, we're generally using like a 40 weight embroidery thread. Like think about just polyester embroidery thread right. that you used to do a monogram on a shirt or something like that. And then your bobbin weight will be 60 or 90 weight right. thread. Um, but, then, but it's lighter because you want to pull the top right. weight to the bottom. Right. You want to see right. top thread on right. the bottom. So we're talking in this top stitching and embroidery. The whole point is you're pulling the top threads to the bottom. In construction, you want that balanced thread. Right. And in you know quilting, piecing, they want that balanced thread. So with top stitching or, and that's a good word, balance, because yeah. it, Balance always doesn't always mean even. It's right. where you want, you know, it's the balance that, that you're you trying want, to achieve. That you want to right. achieve. Right. And so there's lots of specialty situations for bobbin thread. Like a really thick thread can be used for bobbin play. Right. And then people will sometimes use like a clear thread in the top. And yes. they're showing off that bobbin, you know, that thick non-needle bobbin thread in the bobbin. And that's where that extra bobbin case that you mentioned earlier comes in handy. And, and we can talk, we can... This is a good segue to winding your bobbin. Uh -huh. um, Mallory talked about clear thread on top, which is there's a there's a nylon clear thread and a polyester clear thread. I would prefer the polyester clear thread. It does not stretch as much as that Monopoly nylon. thread? It's called, yes, it's mon, <laughs> mono monopoly, poly, uh, yeah. which is monopoly oh, thread, yeah. <laughs> but it's monopoly, uh, but it's monopoly thread. So... I would prefer that to the, um, oh, what did I call it? Nylon. Nylon. Thank you. Oh, it's really late. You guys have no We're idea. Pretty late. We, this is like the end of a it's week, really and late. it's really late. Well, the other thing um, I'll say, I don't like clear thread. <laughs> okay, Mallory doesn't like clear thread. There's things I love clear thread for, but I always use the metrosine construction weight in the bottom. Never in the bobbin. And here's here's one reason why. Because I used to have to use nylon because the monopoly or monopoly uh -huh. thread is is relatively new. I'd say it came out about 10, 12 years ago, whatever. So new, Mom. Yeah. 
That's new to me. Uh, so anyway, um, because when you wind nylon thread, yeah, it will stretch. Yeah, yeah. It's the same when you want do elastic thread. Metallic thread. thread it stretches. Like it, all these th mylar yeah. is really bad. Uh -huh. It stretches. Wind bobbin. Okay. Right. So when we're winding those bobbins, we don't want a lot of tension on our thread. If I was winding, uh. If I'm winding something that is not my regular construction thread or my regular embroidery weight thread in the bobbin, sometimes I will skip the tension disc that it's supposed to go through. Oh my God, I was just going to talk There's about how all these things. There's to, hand, well, to be careful about that. I know. <laughs> so let's talk about the tension. Here's what we should talk about is how do we just wind a normal bobbin without, with, without making any exceptions here? This is normal procedure. Yes. What do you do, Mallory? So we put our thread on our machine, on our whatever spool pin you're going to use. And every machine will have a different And it's bobbin. good quality thread. And, well, of course, right? Um, <laughs> every machine will have a path that's in your owner's manual, or it's probably on a newer machine, delineated on your machine right. with a dotted line. There'll be a solid line for like your top threading and a dotted line for bobbin winding. But the most important part, the most important thing that you need to do is there's some little spring on top of your machine. It'll look like a little disc. It may even look like it has a little screw on top. But you got to get that thread under that spring somehow, some way, so that there's... You're going to floss it in like yeah, when you flo floss your teeth. Floss it in or Hold it tells it you to wrap it around put it in there. or whatever. So that before you put the thread to the bobbin you feel resistance on the thread. And what this does is it regulates the thread as it's winding around the bobbin. If you start to wind the bobbin and it looks hairy or loopy or something, you stop. Or it's threading it. just like to the bottom or just to the top yeah. and not going evenly uh -huh. onto the, the spool. Yeah. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Or if you're winding around the bottom of your... <laughs> Which people Below do the, the bobbin yeah. platform or something. Anyway. And, yeah. and most of our machines do stop when the bobbin's full. Yeah. They our newer ones. Yeah, the newer ones generally stop. But yeah. Sometimes they don't. And if they don't, there's an adjustment for that. That's right. So anyway, and, and on the on the baby locks, they say that they don't want the bobbin completely full. They say 90 to 95%. If it looks like it's boat. You bulging, know, bulging, yeah, no. It should be, there should be like a, more like a concave look to your thread instead of like a convex. And I will say that the Filtech bobbins we sell, they're they're completely full when well, you get them out of the not field. only are they full, they have more thread on them than you can ever get on a bobbin but, and wound But they're, they're more completely tightly. full. But what right. I want to say is that they've recommended, they've said, to, they've said in To pull a few off. So if you have trouble with this, pull a few yards off and. To, for my personal experience, I've never had to do that. I haven't either. With even with a like the ten needle embroidery right. machine and with like the domestic home embroidery machine, either way. But if you are using one of those pre wounds in your machine and you're having a little trouble at the beginning of the bobbin, wind just a couple yards of thread off of there um, and see if that less full bobbin makes a difference. If you're having some trouble with thread breakage or right. something like that, that can be an issue. And, you know, I, uh, there's one thing here I'm not sure I can address, and I don't know if you have any experience. I have only used the pre-wound bobbins in modern machines. I have not used them in an older machine. I, well, I don't know. Maybe I had an old Bernina I used it in one time. But um, so ju just I, I just want to put that out there. Because I don't know that I have a lot of experience yeah, with those in a, I, I an older either. type machine. No, I don't either. That's very true. So if, you know, that's another thing. Test it out with your machine. Right. Make sure you're threading properly. And if it works for you, fabulous. Right. Yeah. And the Filtech bobbins have a um, plastic a plastic bobbin. Uh, bobbin just they're so an, you know. They're an actual bobbin. Right. Which I like. It's not like a paper no. coating. Right. Um, somebody just brought in the magnetic pre-wound bobbins and I got to see those for the first time. They have no casing around them. Right. So they're shaped around this little plastic disc with a magnet on it which actually means you can, well I'm sure you can put it in backwards but it's right. <laughs> people can do anything right. right. You know people are capable of anything but um one thing that concerned me about those is since they're shaped like that with no paper or plastic, there must be a lot of glue on them. Well, that and that's true. Yeah. That is generally what they call it 
you know, binding or a binder. Binder. Right. They don't call it glue. It's glue, everybody. And if it, if it works for you, because like, we've all got a little right. bit of glue in them, and, you know. And when those first came out, people had a whole lot of trouble with them. Uh-huh. And they have gotten better. I All of those things have gotten, gotten better. better. Right. Yeah. Oh, so, so I, you know, try it and like it. Um, we, we stand... We we back Filtech because that's what we use all the time yeah, and we, we like it. Our customers use it all the time. They're not expensive. Um, we have figured it out by how much yardage is on them, and you know we you can't even get that much yardage yourself onto it. Yeah, it's and actually similar to right buying a spool of bobbin thread. You right, know? absolutely. So, yeah. Well, if you have any interesting bobber stories, and how do you spell bobbin, mom? <laughs> Bia, okay, I remember you f- getting kicked out of a spelling test because you couldn't spell pattern one time nah. in, like, you know junior what? high. It's never occurred to me that pattern, like, is a sewing term in that. Like, I know pattern's a sewing term, <laughs> but I never thought of it that way, that I failed on a sewing word until just now. Oh, and I, lot, but I Mom. reminded you. It was fifth grade, okay? <laughs> I spelled it with one T, which is what you did with Bob. Oh, man, I was so mad. Anyway, if you have any uh, interesting bobbin stories, please share them with us. You can email us. Uh, email me, Mallory, at SoHere.com. And we'll have links to some of the things that we talked about in the show notes today. So if you're interested in uh, Filtech bobbins, snaps or snaps, anything like that, uh, we'll have information on those in the show notes. And you can visit us at SoHere.com. Thanks for listening. So long. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.